Teslas are some of the most feature-packed cars out there, but sometimes, since they include such simple interiors, customers don't entirely know where all the features are. Certain features are hidden away in menus, and others just aren't obvious until you know where they are. There are also a number of features you'd never expect in your car, so today we're going to break down the top tips, tricks, and secrets for your Tesla, so let's get into it. I'm going to break down a bunch of quick features today. Some of them will be things that you think are obvious but others don't know. Others will be things that can increase the usability of your car, and others could simply increase the fun that you have in your car. First up is an Easter egg perfect for the time of the year that this video is going up, Santa mode. In any Tesla, you can navigate to the toy box section. The toy box includes a few Easter eggs, but Santa mode is one of the most fun. This turns on some Christmas music and turns your autopilot visualization car into Santa's sleigh, complete with Rudolph and all the reindeer. It's completely unnecessary, but it puts a smile on people's faces. For me, it's one of those things that kind of completes the circle. It's so ridiculous and pointless that it makes me happy to turn it on for fun. Next up, detailed in the same section, is Rainbow Road. To enter Rainbow Road, you press down the drive stock four times. You will be in autopilot, and the road turns into a rainbow while playing the SNL More Cowbell sketch. The worst part of this Easter egg is turning off the audio, which I still haven't figured out how to do. In any case, those are two fun Easter eggs, but next is something practical, the parking brake. This is a feature I actually only recently learned about after owning the Model Y for over a year and a half now. The drive stock controls everything for driving, and you press the park button to enter park. However, for a true parking brake when parking on a hill or whenever necessary, you press and hold this button. Then the parking brake icon will show up on screen. It's very simple, but one of those things that isn't as obvious as you'd think. Neutral is another driving mode that is unclear on the Model 3 and Y, but everyone I've seen drive a Tesla for the first time manages to get into neutral. You can enter neutral by pressing halfway down on the drive stock. You'll rarely need neutral, but for the time it arises, now you know. Now let's talk about features involved with the Tesla app that many don't know about. Tesla has changed the app a lot in the past year. Now included in the app is the feature to live stream your sentry mode cameras at any time. This is great because anytime your car is parked, you can check in and make sure everything is fine. You simply scroll down to security, turn on sentry mode if it isn't already, and then tap live view. You can choose between the four cameras in the car and they stream right to your phone. You of course need premium connectivity for this feature, which is something that might finally make that $10 a month worth it to people. In that same menu in the app, there are two features that help out a lot when loaning these cars to anyone. Valet mode significantly limits the capabilities of the car, and this is especially useful with the fast versions of any Teslas. I know I turn this on immediately when putting the Plaid Model S into valet. Speed limit mode is similar, but doesn't limit performance. This just caps the top speed, preventing someone from driving too fast in the car. A feature that Tesla just recently added to the app is something that has been long overdue, the ability to customize the quick controls. The standard quick controls include lock and unlock, climate, charge percentage, and front trunk opening. For myself, I always use the trunk instead of the front trunk, so I wanted this changed, and now you can. Simply press and hold on any of these icons, and you'll bring up the Customize Controls option. You can swap any controls, and others have reported that they can put up to five icons here. In my experience, I've only been able to put four there, but what's great is that it also changes the controls for the widget as well. So now in iOS, your widget quick controls can open the trunk much faster than opening the app first. A quick note about the widget as well is that you can choose which car the widget displays. So if you own multiple Teslas, you can now have a widget on your home screen for quick access to all of your cars. Next up within the app is a button that says Start under Controls. Teslas don't start, so I never understood this button. However, what it lets you do is enable keyless driving when necessary. It counts down for two minutes, and this allows someone to get in and actually begin driving the car at that time. If someone gets locked out, or if you're out of town and wanted someone to move your car for you, this feature would come in very handy. Next, let's talk about a number of features on screen that speed things things up as a user. But first, for the Model S and X, when plugging those cars in, you can enable a fun little Easter egg by clicking the charge button 10 times when plugging in. These cars have a light around the charge port that illuminates green when charging, and clicking this button 10 times turns that light into a rainbow show, for no real reason, but it's kind of cool. Another quick tip here that some people don't realize is that you can press the button on the charger cable as you approach the charge port door to open it. You can do this with the included mobile charger and a Tesla supercharger. Next up, and back to more practical features, 
features, let's talk about things on screen. In the new Model S and X, what may not be obvious at first is that you can move windows around the screen. You grab the little bar at the top that you typically use to close apps, but you can tap and hold and drag the window to the other side of the screen if you would like. This allows a number of different views, and then you can also choose different sizes for the music app. For myself, I like maps to be the left two thirds of the screen and music as the other third when I've selected the album I'm going to listen to. Then if I need to change it, I can open up music to the larger display or bring it to the left side of the screen if I need it more accessible. In the Model 3 and Y, there are quite a few quick swiping controls you can utilize that aren't obvious at first. For apps like music that cover up maps, you can choose from three different sizes. Full screen is there, but you can drag this down for a smaller view and then drag it down further for an even smaller view or close it entirely. You can do this by dragging on the top of the window on the album art, or you can do these same swipe moves on the music icon itself in the dock. This comes in very handy so you don't have to reach as far over on the screen. You can swipe to those different sizes or simply tap the music icon to close the app entirely. There are other quick options you can utilize in the dock as well. For climate controls, if you simply want to turn climate on or off entirely, you can press and hold on that icon instead of opening up the full menu and then pressing the power button. If you want to adjust the temperature but find the little buttons on either side of the displayed temperature number to be a bit too small, you can swipe left or right on that number itself to adjust the temperature. The same action can be done with volume controls. Simply swipe left or right on the volume icon to adjust volume. I find that this comes in handy if I accidentally had my music up way too loud and need to suddenly turn it way down. Although the scroll wheel is quick for that as well. If you and your passenger can't decide on a temperature for both of you, you can split climate control temperature as well. Tap and hold on the temperature display and then press split. Now there will be a temperature control for each of the two front seats. The next on-screen quick feature is for navigation. When you quickly need to navigate home instead of tapping navigate then home, you can actually just swipe down or swipe to the right on the navigation button. This button is the default screen, so that swipe makes navigating home even faster. In a similar fashion, if you want to remove previous destinations from the navigation menu, you can swipe on those to delete. I just wish you didn't have to do them all individually, but you currently have to do it that way. While we're talking about navigation, there's a great feature that you can utilize if you use Google Maps on your phone. Sometimes it's just easier to find your destination on your phone, or you'll be sent it from someone. You see it in Google Maps, and instead of typing it into your Tesla navigation, you can simply press share, choose the Tesla app, and then that destination will load up within a few seconds in your car. It's very handy, saves time, and ensures that you have the exact address you need. Just note that if you have multiple Teslas, it will default to the car you have currently selected within the app. Voice commands are something people know exist, but many don't know actually how useful they can be. You can ask for a specific song from a specific source, and typically it gets it right. You can say navigate to a destination, and this actually works quickly as well. Then if it needs multiple options, those pop up. So for example, you can search for a Starbucks, and it will show you all the results instead of needing to type in Starbucks with the QWERTY keyboard. Additionally, you can adjust climate controls very specifically using voice commands. You can ask for a specific temperature, turn on heated seats, and do most tasks that typically require the screen. It's worth just sitting with your car and testing different voice commands to see all that they can do, because for some who are worried about screen usage, they can really make a difference. Tesla, like all cars, have chimes to warn you about different things. Sometimes these chimes can be annoyingly loud to individuals or wake up sleeping children. To make your chimes a bit quieter, quieter, you can turn on Joe mode. It's a weird name, so people often don't know what this even does as a setting, but Tesla says, quote, reduce chime volume to minimize disruption for passengers in the rear seats, for example, Joe's kids, while maintaining an effective alert volume for the driver. To enable Joe mode, tap controls, safety and security, Joe mode. In the Tesla Model Y or a hatchback Tesla, the hatchback extends pretty high when you open it, and sometimes it's too high, especially in the bigger cars. For some people, this may hit the roof of a parking spot or garage that they frequently use. In this case, you can set a standard lowered height for the car's hatch. Simply lower the hatch to the height you need, or if you're in that spot at the moment that it would hit, you can force it down before it hits the top spot. Then press and hold the hatch button until it beeps. From then on, it will only open up that high. This is an extremely hidden feature that is very useful. Next is a feature included in the Model S and X, Bioweapon Defense Mode. This is a feature that many don't actually understand. You can press the Bioweapon Defense Mode button in the Tesla app or in the climate controls menu in the car, and beyond just turning up the air all the way on full blast, this cleans the cabin air. It can scrub the air of most chemicals, smells, irritants, and comes in very handy when you're driving through a smoky area or just an area with bad air quality. It utilizes the giant HEPA filter included in these cars and genuinely cleans the air. It sounds like an Easter egg, but 
but it actually serves a really functional purpose. If you want to improve your car in any way and want to see what options are available, Tesla now has an on-screen menu for upgrades. These are exclusively software upgrades at the moment provided by Tesla, and for most people it will show the option for premium connectivity and what that brings. Additional upgrades here could be an acceleration boost or the FSD package, and you can choose to buy upgrades by simply swiping on this menu. Now, if you have opted in for the full self-driving package, there's a new feature that Tesla has pushed out that may interest you. Promised with this package is auto steer on city streets. However, this feature is still in a very limited beta. The way Tesla has been expanding this beta is through a request button within the autopilot settings on screen. You can request the full self-driving beta, and then this will add a new safety score feature to your phone. They have only distributed the beta to customers with extremely high safety scores thus far, but will continue expanding it to those with lower scores over time. If you want the beta, keep in mind that it takes care and attention and won't reliably drive for you on city streets yet. It actually uses the internal cameras to ensure that you are actively paying attention, so it takes attention, but it is a very cool peek into the future of self-driving. People also might just enjoy seeing their safety score and in what areas your driving could technically be safer by Tesla's ratings. Now to finish out a few software tips, let's start with rebooting the screen. Every once in a while, there will be something that freezes on screen in the car. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it can feel like you have no idea what to do since everything in the car is so automatic. Where do you even turn this thing off? If you need to restart the screen or computer for any reason, simply press and hold the scroll wheels until the screen goes black. It can take somewhere around 20 to 30 seconds before this happens because you definitely don't want to accidentally do this. Then the restart itself can take around one to two minutes or so. It restarts the screen and systems and typically will fix any issues you are having. It's also separate from driving, so you can actually reboot while still driving, you just won't have any of your speed info. In a similar fashion with the new Model S and X, those cars don't include a physical shift button. Instead, you shift on screen by swiping. If the screen were to fail here, there are backup buttons hidden at the base of the wireless charger. You have to tap them a few times with some force to get them to light up, but then they are very clear shift buttons to use if the screen were to fail. Some customers may even like these buttons all the time, but I find shifting on screen to be extremely easy. In the Model S and X, since so much of the shifting is automatic, it will go into park for you when you take off your seatbelt and open the door. The same is the case with the Model 3 and Model Y. Sometimes you come to a stop in a parking lot and you're in hold mode, so you forget to go into park and then try to exit. It will beep at you and let you know that it went into park for you. This is nice to have so you don't have to worry that you accidentally left your car in gear. If you have multiple people driving your car, but someone is the main driver, there's a quick setting worth enabling, and that's priority device. For example, my wife and I both drive our Model Y, but in general, if we're together and taking that car, I'll be the one driving it. In this case, we both get in, the car sees both of our phones, but it chooses mine for the driver profile since it's set to the priority device. When driving, you can bring up the rear camera with side cameras at any time with the buttons in the dock. It's easily accessible and can help you make an even safer lane change. Tesla has talked about adding this feature to automatically pop up when you press the turn signal, like many other cars do, but that has not come yet, so you'll have to do it manually if you want to utilize this. Under driving settings, you'll notice three settings for stopping modes. People often don't know what these do, but creep and roll modes will simulate more of a gasoline vehicle feeling when you're letting off the brake. You let off the brake and it starts going slowly, just like cars that people are used to. Hold is the default though, and enables one pedal driving where the car can come to a complete stop without you needing to touch the brake. In my opinion, this is the best option, but it isn't the only one. Another setting that people differ on is looking at charging miles versus percentage. I always use percentage, but every once in a while I'm curious to see its range calculation. In the past, you had to change this setting in the menus, and then it would change the range display. But now in the Model 3 and Y, you can simply tap on your energy icon to switch it. If it shows percentage, tap it to switch to miles, and vice versa. For autopilot, there are a few useful settings to avoid annoying drivers around you and teach it to drive like you. You can choose a speed limit or current speed offset when enabling autopilot. You can choose to have it go a certain amount over if you like. For example, five miles per hour whenever entering autopilot, or you can choose a percentage. I find that percentage works the best since everyone in LA tends to drive at least 15% above the speed limit at any given time. If you do need to adjust your speed when driving an autopilot, you can scroll with the scroll wheel, but to quickly scroll in five mile per hour increments, just scroll quickly. Normally, each quick is one mile per hour up, but if you give the scroll wheel a good flick, it will go up in five mile per hour increments. Last up today is a feature that
that many know about, but might be better than you think, Karaoke. This is a fun, simple feature included in music, but it actually displays song lyrics like proper karaoke, and you can turn the vocals on or off. There's a wide variety of songs available, and while it's just an interface referencing karaoke videos, it's actually pretty fun. Passengers can play this while you drive, as well as a number of games included in the car. So there you have it. That's my full list of Easter eggs, tips, and tricks for Teslas, and I made sure to include everything I truly think is useful, as well as the fun stuff I utilize. Which tip or trick is your favorite in a Tesla, and did I miss any? Leave a comment below to let me know. In the meantime, if you want to check out my full updated Model 3 review, you can check that out by clicking the link up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.